Good morning. Yes, we are tracking what is now Hurricane Ian. Earlier this morning, it was upgraded from a tropical storm to a Category 1 hurricane, and this is what it looks like on satellite. So you can see it is a, a pretty significant storm. The outer bands already lashing Jamaica, Cuba, and the Cayman Islands. So here's a big picture look that shows its proximity to Florida, and that is one of the main reasons why we are so concerned about this system. Right now, Hurricane Ian uh, is a category one storm barely with maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. Its uh, center of circulation is roughly 90 miles southwest of Grand Cayman and it's moving northwest at 14 miles per hour. On this track, we expect Ian to do two things. One is to take a little bit of a turn uh, to the north, but also to intensify. So we are already seeing some hurricane warnings for the western tip of Cuba. We also have a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning that are in. Uh, are already have been posted for parts of Florida because of the track that has it really just aiming for basically for part of some portion of Florida. So you can see it will rapidly strengthen to a category three, which is a major hurricane. Then category four, it should weaken a bit before landfall. But no matter what its category is or really exactly where it makes landfall, we impact. We are expecting powerful winds in Florida, heavy rainfall, which of course will lead to significant flooding, but also storm surge. So a lot going on there. Back here at home, we've got clear skies right now, 58 degrees, so a lot calmer here in the tri-state area. We've got temperatures in the 50s for most, although 60 right now for Darien, Connecticut. We do have a slight chance of some isolated showers this afternoon and this evening. Otherwise, mild and breezy with a forecast high of 74 degrees today in the city. Tomorrow, 72, so closer to normal. Still a little breezy, and we leave in a slight chance of a shower, about a 10% chance of a shower for Tuesday and Wednesday. And Wednesday will be a little bit cooler. That's when we see those temperatures drop out of the 70s, and we'll probably see high temperatures that will max out in the mid and upper 60s. So that starts the middle of the work week. And once that happens, we'll have that fall feel for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even Saturday. Looks like we'll see a high temperature in the upper 60s. But of course, at that point, we you see that Ian's rain. It is a possibility that we could see rain, tropical moisture and rain from Ian as early as Saturday. So we continue to keep an eye on that system. Just know that today, if you're cautious, you may want to grab an umbrella. Otherwise, uh, we are going to see pretty nice conditions with that. I'll send it back to you. Elise, real quickly, before we let you go, this seems like a good opportunity to explain to the viewers what the difference is between a hurricane watch and a hurricane warning or a tropical storm watch or tropical storm warning. Yeah, so we've got the hurricane watch and warnings, uh, some that are posted already and the biggest with this is that a hurricane watch is when conditions are going to be possible typically within about 48 hours but a hurricane warning means that those conditions are likely are already occurring and they like to issue those warnings with 36 hours giving folks an opportunity to make some preparations obviously it becomes more and more difficult to make those preparations to safeguard properties and that kind of thing uh, as a hurricane once those outer bands are already approaching. So they do like to do that. And Elise, as you said, Ian is now a category one hurricane, but expected at some point to become a category four. Can you detail for us those categories and how significant each is? Yeah, so that's what I have behind me. So this is the Sapphire Simpson, Simpson scale, and it's based on wind speeds. So what we had earlier was Ian as a tropical storm, which meant that those winds were below 73 mile per hour winds or below. So those are the maximum sustained winds, not gusts, but maximum sustained winds. For a category one hurricane, what we're seeing or sus maximum sustained winds between 74 and 95 miles per hour. As those wind speeds go up, the category goes up. <coughs> so we anticipate that Ian will become a category two, which is 96 to 110 miles an hour, all the way to a category four at some point uh, on its trek to Florida. And at that point, a category four storm, 130 to 156 mile an hour winds, and those are maximum sustained winds. So this is the kind of system that we are expecting. And again, Again, anything above a category three is considered a major hurricane at some point in its life Ian will be a, a major hurricane so that's why we are so incredibly interested and again uh, as it, it takes aim at Florida so we'll continue to track it but for now I'll send it back to you
Elise, thank you so much. More now on Hurricane Ian, now gaining strength as it moves through the Caribbean. Now, Florida is in the crosshairs and people are already getting ready. CBS News' Elijah Westbrook is following developments. He joins us from the newsroom with more. Elijah? That's right. Well, Chris and Mary, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has now declared a state of emergency. And as of 5 o'clock this morning, a hurricane watch is in effect for the Tampa Bay area as well as Sarasota. Officials there are urging residents to prepare for the storm. As the latest models show, it could bring heavy rain high winds and flooding. There remains higher than usual uncertainty over Ian's path and intensity this morning, according to the National Hurricane Center. Floridians are preparing for every, everything and some stores are running low on supplies. I'm always nervous when they, nervous when they say hurricane, storm, you know, but Listen, I live in Florida. We were trying to get bottled water, but apparently we're a little too late. And water isn't the only item in high demand. Gas cans, extension cords, and believe it or not, grills. Grills are a big item right now during this gas grills. And a lot, we're selling to also selling a lot of propane. The National Hurricane Center says heavy rainfall, flash flooding, and possible mudslides in Jamaica and Cuba could occur as well before the storm reaches Florida. Now, the Florida governor has also activated the National Guard, saying the impacts of the storm will be felt broadly throughout the state. Chris and Mary. Okay, Elijah, thank you very much. Stay with CBS2 for continuing coverage of Hurricane Ian. Our weather team will be tracking the storm all week long, and we'll have reports from Florida on CBS2 and streaming on CBS New York. Now